holiday that celebrates the dead? People and animals painted to look like skeletons. Huge feasts and dancing through the night. <laughs> Welcome to Dia de los Muertos. Well, hi there, reader adventurer, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we are gonna learn about the holiday made famous in Disney's movie Coco. It's called Dia de los Muertos. This holiday comes to us from the country of Mexico, and it's highly celebrated in Los Angeles, San Antonio, Albuquerque, and lots of other US cities. Many countries around the world, including New Zealand, the Philippines, and most of Latin America, celebrate Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. Now, don't get scared or sad, because this holiday celebrates with joy and laughter the lives of our loved ones who've passed on. Beautiful altars are created to honor these past relatives and friends glorious, brightly colored marigold flowers, decorated sugar skulls, fruits and favorite foods, and happy, festive music plays throughout the day and night from October 31st through November 2nd. This holiday originated over 3,000 years ago with the pre-Aztec Olmec people and was designed to honor the goddess of the dead or lady of the dead. Today, many families believe that during these few days of feasting and festivities, their ancestors would journey back to visit them, and the flowers, food, and music not only honor these spirits, but help them find their way back home. Parades fill the streets, and families open their homes to friends, neighbors, and even strangers, serving tamales, red rice, and pan de muerto. Mm, a sweet iced sugar bread made in the shape of bones. To drink, there's hot chocolate and horchata, mm, an ice cold drink of rice milk, cinnamon, and sugar. One of the traditions of this holiday is called satire. Satire is when we make fun of something in order to point out the problems with it or lessen its effects. So, in the case of Dia de los Muertos, it is to make fun of death, so it isn't so scary or sad. Let's read a Calavera poem, <laughs> one of these satires. The neighbor's dog has chased me home every day this autumn. I run away when I'm alone, so it doesn't bite my bottom. Go ahead, little dog, and gnash your teeth, but someday you will be buried beneath. <laughs> There's so much to learn about this wonderful holiday, more than I could ever cover in one video. But let's get to our story now and experience this firsthand. This is my favorite time of year. Most of my friends are putting finishing touches on their Halloween costumes. Pirates and pretty princesses, scary ghosts and blood-sucking vampires. <laughs> but not me. I'm elbow deep in colored icing, feathers, and glittery sequins, helping my best friend Isabel and her family prepare for Dia de los Muertos. The sugar must be exactly the right consistency or the skulls will break apart. <laughs> we watch as Isabel's abuela, that means grandma in Spanish, stirs the hot, bubbling, milky liquid. No touch, chiquita, her grandma barks at her, <laughs> knowing Isabel always wants to stick her finger in the molten sweet liquid that would burn like hot lava. The clay molds are laid out on the table like halved coconuts. Molds that were passed down to Isabella's abuela from her mother and from her mother before that. And one day, they will belong to Isabel. The inside of the molds are shaped like human skulls and they will be decorated in brilliant rainbows of jewels, feathers, sequins, and my favorite, flowers. The smallest of the sugar skulls is for Isabel to decorate. It represents her grandma's youngest sister, Camille, who died when she was only eight years old. 
she contracted a fever, took to the bed, and never woke up. Isabel will make this the most beautiful and special skull of them all. Abuela tells the stories of Camilla and the other ancestors who've passed on. Not sad stories, but funny stories. Stories of triumphs and accomplishments. Like when Isabel's grandpa bought his first car. The first automobile owned by the Fernandez family. And it shone so brightly in the sun that when he would drive by, the neighbors were blinded by the reflection. <laughs> or the time Isabel's great-grandmother saved a baby that was breached in childbirth and it seemed destined for heaven too soon. Rosa, Isabel's great-grandmother, had taken hold of that baby's feet and pulled, twisted her around and pulled her right out, a few slaps on her back to let the air out, and a new baby was born into the world. She was named Rosa as well. Tonight, the smallest skull will be placed on its little altar for November 1st, Dia de los Angelitos, the day to honor the spirits of children. That altar is already decorated with fresh marigolds, a photo of Camilla, a few toys, tall white candles not yet lit, and fruits. The larger family altar is decorated the same, with photos of deceased loved ones and a few of their favorite belongings. And to it, we will add larger sugar skulls and their favorite foods for November 2nd, Dia de los Muertos. Ah, my stomach backflips as Isabel's mama opens the oven door, releasing the aromas ah, of roasted meat and browning butter. Favorite foods are being prepared for the deceased loved ones. Roast beef for Isabel's grandpa pop, enchiladas for her uncle, Tio, red rice for Camilla, and a few other dishes all of which smell like heaven on earth. Isabel's mama, hands covered in enchilada sauce, begins to laugh out loud. <laughs> she tells us of the story of the time when her brother decided to go camping with some friends in an abandoned mine town deep in the Jemez Mountains. Locals, many of whom were descendants of the original miners of the town, warned them not to go in to the old mine shafts, for conditions were not safe and the shafts were prone to collapse. Well, that night, flashlights in hand, <laughs> Isabel's uncle and one of his friends went in to an old mine shaft to explore. They did not find any gold. They did not find any turquoise, but they did find a mean old badger, angered by their lights in his face, and he chased them in the dark for miles. Out of the mouth of the mine, through the trees, and down the side of the mountain, the badger ran and growled, and Isabel's uncle ran and prayed. <laughs> Stories like this fill the room all day, <laughs> while we laugh and cook, decorate and laugh some more, until it is time for me to go home. Two days later, I joined Isabel and her family again for the parade, for the singing and dancing of Dia de los Muertos that will start in the morning and continue late, late until the night. Carmen, her sister, rubs white face paint on us from the tops of our foreheads to the bottoms of our neck. She draws black lines around our faces with eyeshadow to mimic the look of bones. She paints colorful flowers on our cheeks and colors in the areas around our eyes brighter than an Easter egg. For a final touch with eyelash glue, she attaches sequins along large circles of our eyes so they become colorful, huge, bejeweled sockets. We watch as she braids her silky, long, black hair and drapes it across her head, securing her braid with hairpins. Carmen adds large, colorful, silk flowers to her hair and changes in a dress made of white lace and colorful ruffles. Her face matches ours, bejeweled and brightly colored against the contrasting black and white of our skeleton makeup. I look at her and think there's nothing more beautiful in the entire world of the living and the dead. Hola!
<laughs> Manuel, Isabel's brother, burst through the door carrying his wooden guitar, strumming hard on the strings and scaring us with the loud noise. Get out! Carmen screams at him. <laughs> Exhilarated, we follow him down the hallway while he plays his mariachi rhythms and dances around the room in his large black sombrero hat, sequined in silver and white threads. His face pick matches ours, minus the jewels. Melissa, learn how to play the trumpet, and you can be in my mariachi band. <laughs> he sings at me. Isabel and I squeal and dance, following him around the house as he sings a peppy, fast song in Spanish. Time to go, mija! Isabel's papa yells down the hall at Carmen, who's still in her room, dressing with the door shut. We all pile into the car, careful not to mess up the flowers, the makeup, and head to the parade. Isabel's grandma stays behind to tend the cooking. She says she's attended enough parades in her life and doesn't plan to be celebrated next year during Dia de los Muertos. Thank you very much. <laughs> the moment the car stops inside the parking spot, we kids shoot out of the back seat from both sides, running at the multicolored crowd. We work our way towards the front, and Manuel, the tallest, waves at his parents to come join us. There's a large, shirtless, muscular man in a feathered headdress to my right, practicing drumming and dance moves with the group similarly attired. To my right, a skeleton bride and groom couple standing together as if waiting for their wedding to begin. There, at the parade starting line, the thunderous sounds of trumpets and guitars vibrate through my whole body. I look around at the sea of smiles on brightly painted skeleton faces, hats and flowers, and hundreds of people of all ages. There's a tall black horse across the crowd, its face brightly painted too. Marigolds braided into its mane, eyes wide, it neighs with excitement. The starting trumpet sounds, and we begin to dance, moving forward as one large group, the living and the dead, to celebrate the joyous experience of life, family, and friends. And I have never felt more happy or more alive. What an amazing celebration! <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our journey through the festival of Dia de los Muertos, a celebration of ancestors, family, and friends. Be sure to check out our other Halloween videos where the adventure continues. And until next time, happy story time!